right, so this is the hack that I did to the Samsung CLP315. As you can see, I've got the side panel open, which uh, is really not that big a deal. It looks kind of hairy in there, but so here is the little EEPROM chip that we've modified. That top left pin there is the data pin, the SDA pin for the I2C bus. And you can see that I've attached that blue wire and strung it across to a switch, actually a button, a momentary button that I've wired up over here on a breadboard that is accessible from the back panel. Now if you have the networked version of this, that's uh, not going to be an open spot for you, but I don't have the networked version, so that's all I did there. And what that switch does is just connects the SDA line to ground, and I just found the nearest ground, which is that little point there with the blob of solder on it, and connected it up. It's really not that big a deal. Very, very easy hack. So I'll do a demo here next, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here we are again with a demo of the reset procedure of the hacked CLP315 by Samsung. And what I've done is I've installed a, a little momentary push button here that pulls the the SDA line on the EEPROM to ground. And so I'll go ahead and just show you guys what the what the current count is on the printer. So I'll print off the configuration report by clicking and holding this button until we get a rapid flashing light. And there it is. Okay, so you can see here that we've got nine color pages, seven pages mono, and then the totals for each of the different drums, or I'm sorry, the, the different toner cartridges. So it looks like we have nines and 14 on the black. So what I'm going to do is now perform the hack. So the procedure for performing the hack is um, holding down this button and then powering it up and waiting for the initialization routine to finish. So I'm just going to leave that held down until this thing stops making noise takes a little while. It takes a lot longer than normal anyway. So what we're doing here is interrupting the conversation between the main processor and the EEPROM by dragging that SDA line, that, that data line, low. None of the information between those two chips is flowing. The main processor can apparently tell because it's not getting any values back, so who knows what's going on, but it does successfully initialize eventually. This is remaining down that whole time. Okay, so it looks like it is initialized, green lights. So I'm going to let off the, the line here. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to print off a color demo page. What this does is, if my understanding of it is correct, it will actually increment all of the values uh, for the, the different counts, and it'll be a successful write to the EEPROM this time because I don't have it held low. So what I'm thinking is happening here is that when it can't communicate with the EEPROM on boot, 
it, it just is left with its initialized values, which are all zero on the main processor memory. So again, that's just the demo page. Now I'm going to print off configuration report one more time, waiting for the rapid blink. And with any luck, we should see zeros on this page. Now we'll still have some problems. We won't see some of the dates that you're supposed to see, and uh, we also won't see a serial number for the USB anymore. But you'll see here that we do have one pages color, zero mono, and that we have, at least in memory, updated the counts. I actually reset them. So to finish, um, I'm going to reboot it regularly. So just flip it off and then flip it back on. And we're going to run that configuration report one more time and make sure everything is kosher. Blink. Everything's back to normal. So that is it. Everything's reset.